Do you want us to do the whole thing? We got a free roll on time.
YouTube Live is brought to you by Trader on the Street, a channel to help you learn how to trade. Click in the link in the description to help you learn more. Hey traders, hey, uh, Dave here with uh, the Apiary Fund. We're glad to have you on board for another exciting adventure of, you, of our live look in at a boot camp. The, uh, like every boot camp, we have done uh, amazing things of moving people from silver to gold and then hopefully we'll, today we're gonna bring our gold traders in for the rest of the week and we'll move them from gold to funding but we've had I've personally been a part of moving a lot of um, our traders here from the silver to the gold and right now uh, Sean's presenting what he calls uh, what we we titled the marble game It's kind of a, a fun game that, that, that we play to emphasize risk reward um, well you know instead of having me explain it to you let's take a look and let's see what Sean's, uh, Sean's explaining and see what he's doing. So let's go ahead and go peek right in on Sean. How many of you want to be right? How many of you, when we were placing that, that British pound trade last night, was, were, were literally freaking out, you know, as that thing is tanking and going against us? And yet, if you just sat there through the, you, you did your best analysis and you sat there through the, the, and worked through the process, you set your stops just like Brian taught us, you set your stops, you let everything run just the way it's supposed to, and you didn't make a lot of adjustments to that, or maybe you did, but, but they were adjustments to, to uh, real adjustments, not, not changing your, your, your projections then that, that trade works out in the long run. So very important as we're talking, as we're looking at, at trade performance to, to realize that alpha, alpha doesn't really come on every trade. You don't get alpha on every trade. Does that make sense? Jot that down, write that down, and just remember it all the time. Alpha does not happen on every trade. It just doesn't. Most of your trades will be bland. <laughs> Most of my trades are bland. And occasionally I just get a, a, a great trade that, that pushes me. And usually it's only one trade in a trading session. When I say one trade, I don't mean one one position, one trade, I mean that block of trades is usually the one that puts me through over the top. Haven't you always found, this is not what I've always found, but you can't plan for it though. If you try to make that thing, that amazing thing, it never pans out. But if it just kind of presents itself to you, okay, that's, that's when it happens. But it, it's like really hard to plan for that that move. It just you're right place, right time for it, and then you just capitalize on it when it happens. But there's a lot of right. Manufacture it, make it happen. There's a lot of right time, right place yeah. to trading for sure. Um, and I'm gonna I'm gonna take a slightly a slight adjustment to that, and I'm gonna say I wobble and adjust my point myself so that I'm in the right place when it happens. So my, the majority of my trading session is adjusting position size, adjusting risk, so that I'm there when the move happens. It's not that I'm all that great at calling the move. Does that make sense? But I'm really good at adjusting myself so that I'm there when the move happens. That, if, I, if I look at my own internal trading strengths, that's what I would say is one of my better strengths as a trader is to, to be able to figure out how to adjust my risk and position so that I'm there when that move happens. That's how I get my alpha, if that makes sense. Very important concept. All right. Um, so how, okay, I often hear this, this, now, this uh, I, I often hear from people who aren't in this industry Sean, when you tra trading, trading isn't really a, a thing. I mean, you can't. You, all you're really doing out there is gambling. You're not. You're, there's no skill to trading. You're just gambling. You're just throwing money at something, hoping that it works out right. Why don't 
collectively, let's go through some ideas as to why that, that, that's not true. Why, why is that not true? What is, what is it that separates trading from gambling? And this is a really important thing to think through. Ideas on that. An investment. We're in control. You're in control. In a gamble, who's in control? The house. The house, the house is in control or randomness is in control, right? But in trading, we're in control of how we allocate our resources. Good, I like that. We're in control. Steve? We plan what we're going to do. Okay, so how there's... How we're going to make and when we're going to get a butt kick. Yeah, so <laughs> we plan. We plan for your butt kicking, right? <laughs> we plan for a win. We plan for a butt kicking. It all works out, but we, we go into it having a, 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 an operational plan for how we're going to execute in the market. So I like that. What are some yeah. other ideas? Basically, probability, right? It's a, you're going to throw the dice a certain number of times and the probability of a certain number is coming up. Or when you play uh, um, you know, um, any roulette game or anything else, like, there's just a probability. So what he's saying is that a lot of, uh, one difference is the probability factor, right? If you, if you go to Vegas, you're, you're, you're entering a probability world that is skewed in which, in wh whose favor? Yeah. The, house. the house's favor. If you play the game enough times in Vegas, you will inevitably lose money because the, the statistics, the odds, are always in the house's favor. And so it's, for you, it truly is a gamble in Vegas because, you know, one of those you may win on and you may win big. You might get that, that car that's sitting in the middle of the thing. But for the, for the rest, for the masses, for the, the cumulative gamblers in that casino, they will lose across the board every day. Day in, day out, day in, day out, day in. How is that not different from the market? It's more than probability. I mean, it's 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 about different things can affect it. There's you know, there's fundamentals that can affect it. You know, like a, an announcement or, or some kind of news that might break it. Or um, there's certain times when volatility. There is no really volatility. In, in, yeah. Yeah. So in when we're when we're trading with the market. The thing that separates this from a, from a gamble is our strategy. Like Steve said, it's our plan. It's our... And how does Sean trade? Huge number of trades. <laughs> right? <laughs> so I, I, skew the, I skew the probability. I, I, number one, I have an edge, right? And I, and I have a large number of trades. So I'm able to capitalize on that small edge because I've got multiple trades going at one time, you know, or, or over a period of time, I've got a whole series of trades. I tap into the law of large numbers, right? If you don't believe me, just go look at that truck outside. <laughs> 23,000 trades, right? And you have a large number of traders in there. Okay, now that, that's an interesting concept too. We also have a large number of traders in the fund. If you looked at the performance of the apiary fund, we actually have been beating the S&P collectively for, since, since the beginning of the apiary fund. We have an alpha, if you will, uh, of greater. Now it's not a huge alpha. So when when I when I sit down and trade, you know, I'm I'm shooting for a 1% return on that account in a trading session. Number one, I can't do that with a 50 million dollar account. Does that make sense? I think I just lost audio. So I can't do that in a $50,000 account. Why can't I do it in a $50,000 account, but I can in a, I'm sorry, I can't do it in a $50 million account, but I can do it in a $50,000 account. What's the difference there? 
push the number of lots through the market? The number of lots. Fifty million dollars worth of lots in the market, it may not absorb it. Okay, yeah, so in order to get that type of return, like today in a $50,000 account, I can push a thousand trades through the market relatively easily. But if I'm trading a $50 million account, I've, I've hit that point of no return. I, I've hit that point where I, I can't, I, I literally can't do that. Does that make sense? Can't feel it fast enough. Not enough buyers to show the sellers or something to show the buyers. So, so this idea of the apiary fund having multiple cells, if you will, hives, bees, <clears throat> managing very small positions is one way that we're, we're seeking alpha <laughs> in the apiary fund. Because you got, it's like this, you, who's been on a cruise? Okay, I was on a cruise last year, and this ship was massive. I thought I, when I walked up to the to the uh, to the shipyard, I'm looking at this thing and thinking, "Wait, is that the Empire State Building, or is that, or is that the ship that I'm going to be on?" It was massive, right? Just huge. Now think of that as the Magellan Fund, right? That thing is huge. Now take. Take that and chop it up into a hundred thousand little tiny pieces and distribute it among each one of you. Now, what's your competitive advantage? What's your edge in the market? To react much quicker. Way, way, way more quickly. Much qu more quicker. <laughs> yeah, you're, you can zig and zag where the, the big ocean liner you know it's going to take a while to get that thing turned around whereas you will be you know zipping around enjoying the waves that come off of that big ocean liner so in order to trade effectively we have to have that edge in the market and there's a lot of different ways that we have an edge in the market one of what do you suppose in my in my opinion there's one edge that beats out all others. And what do you suppose that is? No trades. Training. Not, not trades. Training. Education. Not, not education, because once you get that, you're, you're pretty well set. But it, it's something beyond that. Risk management. Risk management is part of it, for sure. Experience. Process. Money management, collectively. So not just risk, but also how much you're, you're trying to make on those trades. So it's money management. It's that balance between how much do I want to make in this trade and how much am I going to risk on this trade, mm -hmm. right? That is the sole reason why the wobble technique works is because I'm managing that, that, uh, that teeter-totter between how much risk am I going to take versus how much money am I going to make. So the more risk that I take, I, I better make a whole lot more money because I'm taking that much risk. And what I like to do with the wobble is I like to put that on a teeter-totter and just teeter-totter back and forth between risk and opportunity. That's the whole premise behind the, uh, the wobble technique. All right. There are some other advantages that, that we have that makes trading not a gamble. We manage inventory, right? If you think of managing inventory as currencies in your account, then you have a management aspect to, to trading. There's a management aspect to trading that separates it from a single gamble. Does that make sense? You have, you have multiple instances of the, of the probability fact set. So you can tap into that probability and tap into the law of large numbers because you're holding and managing inventory over a period of time. Um, the trends, the trends in the market give us an edge, right? So the whole idea that momentum 
is real in the market and we can take advantage and align ourselves with that momentum, that gives us an edge in the market. All right. <clears throat> Money management is the biggest influencer for growing wealth and income. Why do you suppose that is? Why do you suppose why do you suppose I'll, I'll why do you suppose I'll say that money management is more important than picking the right direction? You prove, you prove it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> but why? Why is that? Trade for tomorrow. You're you're there to trade another day, <laughs> live to live to trade another day. I like that. What are some other ideas there? You manage your losses. You manage your losses. You never. You, you, your whole objective is to not let yourself take losses that are that are you know that are too deep that you can't climb out of them. So. I don't know, honestly, if I look back on an entire year's worth of trading, I don't think I've ever gotten into a hole so deep that I couldn't climb out of it. Does that make sense? In the early stages of my career, was not the case. <laughs> was not the case. Many times, you know, I took that thing down 50, 60, 70 percent, not just once, but many times in my career. I'm a hard, I, I'm a hard-headed learner. It takes me a bit to, to figure out what's important in the market. So money management really is the key to consistency and success in the market. So with that, we're going to play a little game. We're going to call it, we called it the marble game, but we lost our marbles. <laughs> so now we're going to have to call it the eraser game because <laughs> we went to three stores this morning and nobody had the marbles, <laughs> but we found erasers. <laughs> All right, if we could uh, have our trusty assistant come up. <laughs> this is Lexi, trusty assistant. And we've got our scorekeeper over here. What we're going to do is we're going to play a game. And this is what we're going to do is we're going to, we've got a, we've got a beginning balance of $10,000. And collectively, what I want to do as a group is we're going to go five rounds and I want to decide how much money to allocate to each individual selection. Okay, so this is the breakdown. These are the probability set. This is the probability set. We've got 19 yellow. Are they yellow? Okay, and I've got 19 yellow erasers. Um, if, if if we, if you bet a hundred dollars, or if you put a hundred dollars into the the trade, and and Lexi pulls out a yellow, then you will make one hundred dollars in that trade. Okay. Uh, if Lexi pulls out a blue, you bet one hundred dollars, and Lexi pulls out a blue, then you'll make two hundred dollars on the trade. But there's only five blues in the bag. Okay. Uh, if you pull out, if she pulls out a purple, you'll lose a hundred dollars. Pulls out a green, you lose two hundred dollars. And then there's the Warren Buffett move, where if you pull, if if she pulls out a pink, you'll make a thousand dollars. Pulls out a, a pink with an X on it, you'll lose fifty dollars or five hundred dollars. If you go through the math. The probability, you think of this marble, this system as a trading, as, 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 think of this as a trading system. And if you go through this, the math on this system, this system has a 60% probability of winning. Okay? So does that make sense to everybody? Is that after a certain amount of draws, or is that... Uh, when the erasers are all dispensed? Or? That's a good question, and we can play the game both ways, but for now, we'll put the, we'll, we'll create each trade, each pull will be an individual and a unique 
So we'll put the, the old eraser back in, so you'll have the same probabilities for each trade. That system won't change, so if that makes sense. Yes. Okay, everybody on board? So let's, uh, all right, scorekeeper, referee Todd over there. Yeah. Let's, uh, first, let's do the first round. We're gonna go five rounds. So how much should we bet? How much should we place on this first trade? How much money should we place on this first trade? $1,000. 1%. Okay, 1% 1 of 10,000 is $100. So let's do $100 on this one. All right, Lexi. What do they get? A blue. A blue. Oh, nice. That was a good trade. Can we change that to the Hindsight trading. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're now up to twelve hundred dollars in the account, or twelve, or one thousand, or ten thousand two hundred dollars. All right, round number two. How much? Man, I can't play this game with you guys. <laughs> one percent. This is these are the discussions I want to have, not just the one percent, one percent. Ooh, we got a we got a high roller over here in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> so how much, Lana? Forty dollars on this. Who? who, who? Five hundred. Okay, so we got two. If we bet it all and we lose. We can go to lunch earlier. <laughs> <laughs> it's all about motivate. Uh, hungry. <laughs> it's all about the. Uh, all about lunch, huh? <laughs> We're very food motivated. All right, let's let's come up with something. And Forty dollars minus five x that would be minus two hundred dollars potential loss. So that's minus two percent on the whole account. What are some other ideas on this trade? So we've got one idea out there to decrease the the uh, allocation. We've got one idea to decrease the allocation and and say why again, Lana. Lana. So, if we, if we trade $40, we can lose up to $200 if it drill pink X. And $200 is 2% maximum loss from 10,000. So she's looking at it from a max drawdown position idea. So she's looking at her trading statistics and saying, this system has had a max drawdown of this, and so I'm going to allocate based on my max, my, my max drawdown, okay? It's a very valid way of looking at it. I say two hundred dollars. Two hundred dollars, and your reasoning why? Purple is a minus one, so that would bring you down to where you started. Okay, so using this this idea of market of, of portfolio allocation is saying, I'm going to I'm going to risk all of my gains on the new trades. Right. Okay, that's another interesting way of looking at it. Well, five times five times five hundred is twenty five hundred, and if you hit on, on, on the peak, but if you have to hit the hit the ten, you've got five thousand. You got a lot more money. Okay. <laughs> So that's a true. I'm I'm motivated only by the big hit. I'm a home run kind of guy, and if I can get that home run, I am happy, happy, happy. <laughs> okay. And if you hit the and if you hit the pink or hit the pink X, you're out of the game. <laughs> All right. So okay, so let's pause here. The I love I love 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 what we're talking about here because you're starting to think and and I want you to start to think about how you make decisions in the market. We presented three different ideas on how we allocate money to the market. One is I'm going to take my my max drawdown and I'm going to protect the account value 
in the worst possible scenario. Yes, it only happens one out of, what's the total? 40. One out of 40 times. It only happens one out of 40 times. Or whatever that number is. <laughs> but if that happens, I will be safe no matter what. Okay, so that's one idea. Another idea is I it doesn't really matter whether I'm just gonna I'm gonna take the highest probability set, I'm gonna discount this and I'm going to discount the 1 out of 40 odd, right? I'm going to discount the max drawdown because that only happens 1 out of 40 times. And I'm going to, and I'm going to allocate any of all of my winnings to this trade, which is another idea. The odds are pretty good in favor of that. I'm, I'm going to do the novel technique and say I'm going to <laughs> and then there's another idea where you just keep a straight, <laughs> steady eddy 100 times. But, but that is the wobble technique, right? In a sense, that is the wobble technique because you're just, you're just going to play the odds over and over again. I'm going to place 24,000 trades. I'm going to get $1.91 out of every one of them. <laughs> Over the twenty-four thousand trades. Oh, cool. Two erasers, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's another thing. How many trades are we allowed to make? Can we? Are we making just one trade, or we wobble and we make five trades? Well, we've got five rounds in the set. In the oh, set. We do have five rounds. So, you know, that we're just we're just we're in round or we're in trade number two. We're in trade number two, so we'll have you know three more. So, think about that, and, and I want you to really think about how you make decisions with your money because this is very real. I mean, all of everything of what you've said are ideas that come through your mind while you're determin determining how much money to allocate to a trade. And all of them have, a, have an element of reason to them. They sound reasonable to us. They, there's, you know, there's a, there's a reason and an opportunity with each one of them. Even with the you know, the big allocation, I know for a fact that I, I have thought that way and allocated that way in the market. So. We, we could also stop trading, right? We make our 2% and we're, we're, out. we're done. We're done. Who wants to go to lunch? <laughs> <laughs> Todd's we got our Sean, Sean, what if, what if we uh, did kind of a negative progression? We kept our bet the same at $100. But if we were to lose, whatever we lost, we would double that the next one. Because then if we win on the next one with a double bet, we're back up to a thousand dollar and we never touch our winnings. Okay, so that's another idea that that we often think through, you know. Um, in, uh, it, that's more of what we call a martingaling approach to it. And that's also a fading, when I fade wobble, that's kind of the idea behind the fable, fade wobble. As it goes against us a little bit, we're we're big, we're taking a little bit bigger, a, a little bigger risk on each one of them. But that again is another idea, Fred. Well, what I did when I played blackjack. Okay, blackjack. Now, now we're getting somewhere. <laughs> I win two hands in a row. So I bet one unit. If I win, I got two units there. I add one more to it. I got three units. So I win now. I'm four units ahead. So it's a 50 50 game. They got to beat me four times now to get their four units back. So I won. Okay, so Mike said in a martingale, this is an anti-martingale approach. You're doing the opposite opposite side of that, scaling into the winning keep trades. Your bank leveler for a long period of time. Yeah. And if you really know basic strategy and can play the game decent, I can make 200 bucks a 200 bucks an hour. Okay. Yeah. So again, it comes back to your your odds and your and your and your strategy. Uh, which of these ideas that you want to you know, implement? All right, so we've talked through some number of scenarios. Let's just throw out. Let's throw out a trade here. Let's see where it takes us. Or do we want to go big or small? Consistent. Small or consistent. We get let's three votes. We got big in the back, small with Lana, and consistent with Steve. So all for consistent, raise your hand. $100, $100. I think that's the, 
that's the uh, the winner right there. All right, you ready, Lexi? Oh, I'm nervous. <laughs> yellow. A yellow. Yeah. Yeah. Another hundred dollars. Can anybody say wobble technique? <laughs> All right. Uh, trade number three. Trade number three. Do you go big? No. Uh, all for big. <laughs> One area. Um, when you get funded, make sure that you and I make. Let's make sure that we have a little discussion. <laughs> I'm gonna make a note. Hey, Ron, uh, let's have, let's have a three-way with Harry. In the <laughs> all right, all for consistent. Uh, I think that one again. <laughs> All right, Lexi, how's the trade work? Yellow. Yellow. Wow. Another wobble. I think it's all me, you guys. Wobble, wobble. <laughs> I'm your lot. <laughs> wobble, wobble. All right, round number four, trade number four. 200. Oh, he's scaling back. <laughs> he's trying to allocate. He's trying to draw traders in. I'll go with him. $300 a hit. Go with $300. We we're still ahead. Yeah. 200, you're still ahead. Yes. So now we, we really are going with the, I've got some profits here that I can work with. And that is that is legitimate. You know, I'll, I'll do the same thing in a trading session. For sure, I'll do that. But what if Lexi doesn't pull up? <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> what have we got to throw so Lexi in here? 200? All for 200? Raise your hand. 200. All for... <laughs> you guys always know that it's the last trade that gets you. <laughs> <laughs> Over trading. Quit while you're ahead. <laughs> 100. 100? Okay, all for 100, raise your hand. 200. All for 200, raise your hand. Oh, that is like half of We'll go 150. 150. 150? 200, go ahead. Don't be a coward. 150? Do I hear 150? 150? 150. 150. <laughs> All right, Lexi, trade away. Purple. Purple. Oh, a minus 150. So where are we at? And what did Todd tell us? Todd gave us the the sage advice of like quitting while we're ahead. <laughs> now we ended on a losing trade. Dang it. We got to get it back. Let's go again. <laughs> One more. One more. One more trade. One more trade? <laughs> Harry's like, he's going for it. <laughs> it's 650. <laughs> All right, let's 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 time out again. All right, what have we learned from this? Don't make the last trade. <laughs> so is there some validity to, I mean, is there some value to quitting while you're ahead? Yes. Yeah. I know that when I, okay, when I get my, my big move for the day, the one that I'm banking most of my profit on, I stop because I have learned through sad experience that if I keep at this game, I'm gonna have another two hours at the, at the trading desk, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It just happens, I don't know why, but it's just the reality of how life is in the market. He's open to walk away or what? Yep, no window, like, yeah, Kenny Rogers, we ought to just play that over and over and over. <laughs> Theoretically, with blackjack, if you double now, double, if you get behind, you double it every time, sooner or later you're gonna win. Okay, so that's an anti-martingale. And I'll tell you a story about anti-martingales. So there's a new fund that started up and I was asked to come and give my opinion on the validity of this new fund, what they were doing, their money management, everything like that. So I go and I take a look at it and I realize that it is that technique. It's an anti. It's a martingale technique. 
any loss that they take, they're doubling up on, 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 and they don't have any, any mechanisms for an exit. So their technique was, and, and they went back and they had a good track record, really a phenomenal track record. Um, the guys that were looking to trade this, this new system were all over it. They're like, man, this is the best system I've ever seen. Uh, from my years of experience in the market, I'm like, red flag, red flag, red flag, red flag, don't do this. And I write this big report up for them and I'm like, this thing is doomed. Like, it's doomed from the start. You may have a run for 10 years, but when, when, it, when it hits, you're gonna lose massively on this account. When it, goes, when it goes wrong, and the probability is small, the probability is small, but when it hits wrong, you're gonna lose a lot of money in this, in using this system. Is this a platform? I'm not gonna say. <laughs> So, um, so they decided to disregard what I said. They decided to disregard. They had brought in a, a, uh, a statistician, paid him a lot of money to come in, and they decided to disregard what the statistician said. Um, and they opened up the fund. They allocated $10 million to this initial fund. Um, from a, you, they just reallocated it to this this fund, ten million dollars. They started trading it, and I got a quarterly report. They made great money that quarter. Second quarterly report, phenomenal return on it, on their investment, just really phenomenal. Third record, third third month or the third quarter, I get a panic phone call. We are down eight million dollars in this account. What do we do? <laughs> like, the eraser game. I called it the marble game, and then we found out uh, during the presentation that he that Sean legitimately lost his marbles. So it's now the eraser game. But anyways, the whole point of the concept was is you take a, a group of people and you let them trade together and. And nine times out of ten, you know, you're going to be positive, right? Because it's the it's the aspect of a group trading, and that's kind of what we do at the Apiary Fund. Um, and would you believe if I told you that in the past, uh, since 2011, since 2011, the fund has actually only posted one losing month, and it is because of the concept of that crowdsource, right? Some people might be lose, so, lo losing, some people might be winning, and the, but the, every month after month, the winners always outweigh the losers of of the trades, right? And so uh, it's just kind of more social proof that the Apiary Fund, um, well, has a solid game plan. Hopefully, if you guys haven't had the opportunity to take advantage of a boot camp, next time you will, or even get started with the Apiary Fund and start trading our money. But anyways, hopefully you guys had a great time here on, on, the, on the YouTube Live today, and we'll see you next week when we actually do it from on the road on our journey to the summit. So we're excited about that. So thank Thanks for everybody for tuning in, and we'll see you next week. Thanks. This episode of YouTube Live was brought to you by Trader on the Street. Join Sean Lucas as he works one-on-one -on -one with other traders to try to make more in one hour than the average American makes in one day. And learn more about Sean's unique and effective strategies and techniques.